Did you hear about that murder in the papers? Terrible stuff. Call him one and his ten. Chocolate nut. You know why they call him that? He collects his prey's right hand, gets him here sore, and slices it clean off. If you ask me, Psycho probably eating it with baked beans out of a can. Oh, you missed that. Did you hear about Warren and the stands and apps capture? A few quick stabs to the stomach he punctured. Nobody knows why he does it, but my mate Tommy told me why. Tom's a dirty little cheek, but screw it. He says that Warren and stand was a butcher he was. He chopped meat with his cleaver and went with the dogs wild and two down outside. A spare flab of meat he would toss. But everyone know you shouldn't feed the stray dogs, cause they'll just whine and whine for more. As their moans and groans only groan, distractedly so, his silver edge split and his right hand splattered onto the floor. Then he tried to piece himself back together, but the large mutt became a thief and went away with its face. So one hand stand walks out into the night streets to collect the hands of silence, drunkens and elites. His bolting saw has met no match, and he sees that the lady's fingers will not do his teeth ratch. Oi fella, did you hear about this one hand stand? I kill him on the roads. People practically flying away off Bond Street at five pay him. <laughs> Me customers running away in flights. Listen, I've been working on these roads for years. Years close to the wall. Know the goings of arms on mouths of the parliaments. Me knows what's going on. There be this fella. A barber he was. And he went by the name of Teeny Tud. Because he was teeny. Yeah, he'd take his customers with his magical chair, he tossed them back into a big back room and feed them big meanie. They say that teeny Todd be dead. Well, I ain't seen his corpse by the gallows, so he must still be mugging all the other witch fellows. To why he steals the dead hands, that is your query. Simple explanation, you see. There was also his sister, Mrs. Lovett, whose pies were ne the wounding elites of fire. Then the meat in their bones continued to grow and bold like a croaking toad, so they can no longer take their golden winds, which are worth loads. So one hand Stan has to cut the whole damn ham off the gate's reward, and he spends the waking hours trying to slip the ring off, the severed hand he must tirelessly contort. Oi, mister, this here about this one hand Stan? These papers just don't understand. Because the truth is that this dad isn't really a man. He's a vessel of the demons, a ghostly apparition. Yeah, you think I'm mad. But listen, this ain't no silly superstition. I ask, why does this mom require so many hands? Oh no, the practice of witchcraft. I see him now, with two tooth hacked, basting in black bile, foxglove and cut tongue of calf. All gathered round over the devil's star, and under the guise of night conduct the most evil of conductions. Oh, what plans and spares they must have in store. The turning of tides, the worsening of weathers. Tides of the holy world they have all tethered. I see it, I fear it. Potions to turn women into men, and these false men shall be sent to the mills and factories to fix and mend. Yet the true womanly nature shall prevail. They shall cease to make anything of value or work at the pace of a snail. A dastardly device infiltrating the production of foods and goods to attack the heart of our country. A conspiracy, I surmise. I see these things, arms sneaking and cunning like the illustrious mouse. What? No, I have not made my way out of a madhouse. Oi, mister, care to take a look in my shop? I have all sorts of trinkets, so exotic and vast. The enormity of this just makes you drop. Come in, come in, I have tastes to suit all. Obscurities, herbs, and a whole lot more. What? I can keep secrets. I am comfortable on the practices that the uninitiated have appalled. Precious fumes of Peru, creams to make your skin less, or perhaps you have the pitifully common illness, the absence of another's touch. Do you like it? I saw in the alleyway in Bond Street and I simply had to have it. Feel the skin, so smooth and without blemish. The stroke upon one's cheek, 
The following of hands, commonly unfulfilled, is such a human wish. What well, understand her? Be a gentleman and bestow your kiss upon her gentle knuckle. So young and fleshly she remains in juice of pickle. What's that, my dear? Oh, oh my, she likes you dearly. A fondness that I see is fondly it's reciprocated. I hate to see her go, but more money reward is always appreciated. Oh, what craving of yours goes unquenched, the hug of a mother, the nestling of a lover. Once I had a gap in my soul too, not a hole per se, but a trench. Born on doorstep and left for the nuns, was left with a lonely heart, hungry for the company of tons. But now I'm husband who treats wife by candlelight. A father who holds his daughter's hand while walking through cold winter nights. A brother who is not afraid to give his sibling a little cuddle. And at night, I sit next to the fireplace with my family. And like hustling penguins, we huddle. I have uncles, nephews, grandmas, cousins, second cousins, stepbrothers, stepmothers, and countless relatives and more. A new family I have acquired to replace the one that I lost. My connections were once torn, but now I have the company of wives, sisters, daughters to nuzzle with at night. Love made physical, family solidified, and you see what I possess, right? Yes. And what I see before me and the boy I once was are certainly familiar. I do not understand why we must conceal all our desires, for they are all similar. Call me a blow heart, but in our usual struggles for familiar comfort, sets a peaceful bond. Does it have to separate once we part?